Welcome to the lab on IPS. We're going to give you a real-world demonstration of how IPS looks using the sonic wall as an example. So once again, we're not interested specifically in learning how the sonic wall works, but to see this in general, the, the general idea should carry through to any other appliance. So on the sonic wall, in order to, in order to see the IPS, we go to security services, and then we choose, choose intrusion prevention. And here you can either enable it or disable it. So if it's enabled here, then it's pretty, it's pretty much ready to go. So if this is enabled, then you do have intrusion prevention working and it's going to test everything that passes through the sonic wall against these signatures. So you can see that you have about uh, 5,000 signatures here. So an, another thing to notice is that you have a signature timestamp. So it means that the last time signatures were downloaded was yesterday. Today is the, is the 7th. So pretty much every day you're going to get new signatures from SonicWall, assuming you're licensed and you're, and you're, you know, you're paying for it. So... There's another thing here. If you, if you don't want to accept the defaults, you can you can adjust this a little bit to your to suit your needs. So what they do is each one of these signatures is either they rate it as either high priority, medium priority, or low priority. So if you look here at at this one signature, you know at these signatures here, these are all mediums. But if you scroll through, you'll see some that are high and some that are low. So the folks over at SonicWall are saying that if it's a high priority, then that's a very dangerous attack. And if it's low priority, then it's not very dangerous. So by checking these, you can prevent and detect high, medium, or low as you like. So if you anything under prevent means it will actually stop it. Anything under detect means that it will log it but not actually stop it. So if you if you don't want to deal with, with low priorities, then you can just uncheck that. Now, you might want to do that because low priorities attacks can sometimes cause false positives. Another thing you might want to do is you might want to st start out with prevent all and detect all and just see how, how much of a nuisance it is. You might have a lot of, of end users complaining that they can't do this and that. So what you might want to do to prevent that would be to do it like this. So you, you're not going to actually prevent them, prevent low priorities, but you're going to detect low priorities, which means it'll log it. Then you can look at the logs and based upon what you see, you can make a decision as to how you want to set this up in the future. Uh, now, the only other thing that you might want to do is sometimes you find a particular signature is causing a, a problem for you. It's a, it's a false positive. So you can disable any signature that you like. So let's just go to, say, oh, NetBIOS. So if this particular if this particular signature was causing you a problem, then disable it from from here. So that's a little bit of information, give you an idea as to how IPS works in general. That is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching.